What's going on? It's your boy CJ Goodfellow. We is here at the Boston Clinic. Um, random video Saturday. You know, something I might start. You know, I did the two pot. Um, you know, review. Um, you know, first movie review. And um, let's get into some uh, my top five rap albums of all time. Um, just a random video. I'm just, you know, just dabble here. Maybe do some football, basketball, hockey type shit. Um, and, you know, uh, starting off my fifth all time uh, album on my list of the top five um, will be Jay Z The Blueprint. Um, everybody will cry and tell you that um, Reasonable Doubt was his best album, but, you know, it's just my opinion, you know. How I see see it playing out is reasonable doubt was a very um, deep and food for thought, soulful type of type of album. But you know, uh, you feeling it? You know, Dead Presidents with with, with the Nas sample on there. Um, you know, a lot of great songs. Can't knock the hustle, but to me, the blueprint for Jay Z. He had a lot of different type of songs on there. He had those soulful songs as well, but. You know, he had a lot of bangers, you know, the takeover. Girls, girls, girls. You know, uh Izzo. You know, it was a great album with a lot of smash hits and you know, Reasonable Doubt didn't hit the hit the floor running, you know. People didn't realize it until a few years later, but um definitely it was a great album. I wouldn't argue for people saying it was better. I just think uh the commercial appeal of uh, the blueprint was and overall his mastery and his craftsmanship, you know, just made it better in my opinion. Uh, my number four album of all time is The Chronic. Um, I understand Dr. Dre isn't the MC, um, as the rest of these other people is on the list, top MC. But, um, you know, one thing about The Chronic was the impact that it had. You know, it, w it ushered in a new era for the West Coast. I understand his importance with Ice Cube and, um, you know, Easy. And um, his self ushering in that kind of gangster rap era and America's Most Wanted uh, by uh, Ice Cube was, you know, was a great album. But this The Chronic kind of really, you know, was iconic and kind of put West Coast, you know, along with a lot of Ice Cube's type of stuff. And then you had, you know, pop rap in the West Coast. But it kind of it kind of spawned a lot of stuff that came from from there. You know, Snoop Dogg, Doggy Style spawned that. Spun, spun the dog pound and eventually it touched Tupac a little bit when he came over with all eyes on me when he briefly worked with Dr. Dre before he left uh, Death Row, you know. And, um, you know, it was just a, a great album. You know, uh, of course, Let Me Ride, Nothing But a G Thing, Little Ghetto Boy, um, and the DLC did a lot of dope uh, writing for that. And Snoop Dogg, you know, there are a lot of dope <laughs> flows on there. You know, it could have been called, you know, Snoop and Dre, The Chronic, with, with a hit of DLC on there as well. But it was just the impact that that album had, you know. It influenced rap like damn near no other album had. You know, the impact that it did have on rap. Um, and, and, and the stuff that and, and the stuff that it spawned from it, though. It spawned a lot of Hall of Fame-type ra uh, rappers from it. Um, uh, and, you know... It was just a dope CD, you know, it was just dope all the way around. Um, you know, I think um, that's the point where where people took notice that the West Coast was here to stay. You know, it wasn't a fad. You know, they were just as competitive as the East Coast was at the time, if not more. I think they dominated the 90s uh, just as much as the East Coast did, you know, before the South was really starting to come up. You know, Outkast that just around that time came out as well. And, you know, the South had a lot of dope, you know, dope music, but it was more underground because they couldn't get in. They couldn't really squeeze in between that East Coast, West Coast, West Coast competition beef they had. But, you know, they got their time eventually. And, um, you know, let's move on to number three. Um, Nas Illmatic, um, another uh, food for thought type of CD, Soulful. Didn't have the up tempo beats, which I kind of knock reasonable doubt for that as well. But this CD was just so so crafted, so well. It was so so just different. It wasn't that it was different. It was just like deep. You know, it made you think. It didn't dumb you down like the rap albums did today. And and and, and the wordplay was amazing. You know, I think uh, this just shows you how dope Nas was. You know, just you know whose world is this? You know. And amongst other dope songs that he did have on there, just out the album songs were just as amazing as the singles that he did, that he did. Nas is like so, you know. Um, 
Um, definitely number three, and I can I have made plenty of people have made a case for it to be number one. I wouldn't argue that as well. You know, definitely Nas's best uh, CD. Um, Ready to Die by Notorious B.I.G. Biggie Smalls. Um, to me, it was my favorite Biggie CD. You know, I understand that Life After Death sold more, uh, reached diamond status, but this CD was just you know with Juicy. Um, I believe Suicidal Thoughts was on there. Um, Everyday Struggle was on there. It was just a dope CD. And um, once you grow up, you know, living there, you don't really, you really, you know, appreciate that Biggie's wordplay and his lyrics. I think he's the best um, lyricist in rap of all time, in my opinion. And his flow was amazing. And, you know, um, definitely did a dope job on, on that. You know, he had a crossover appeal, even though he was more of a street dude with a lot of thug appeal. And, and and Biggie kind of uh, not Biggie but Puff kind of turned him towards a little bit of commercial appeal, and he kind of took off by doing different stuffs than different than party and bullshit and um, all the other st early stuff he did. He was trying to rap, and um, definitely spawned a classic there. And uh, All Eyes on Me I had was my number one. Most people tell me Me Against the World, but line those songs up with a double disc CD. And see how many singles, like really, really smash hits that Tupac had off of All Eyes on Me. You know, I'm not even have to round, round off how many songs he had on there. You know, Me Against the World was great. You know, um, my two favorite, you know, Pac CDs was the first two, Strictly for My Niggas and Tupacalix. Those are my two favorite ones. And, you know, people pointed out to me what well, Pac was in a better place with Me Against the World. Yes. But just because you're in a better place doesn't make, doesn't make you know, doesn't diminish when you're in a, a worse place. When he was all eyes on me, he had dope features, the dopest production, and, like, it was just a straight classic. And that's my number one uh, rap album of all time. Just my top five. You know, I just, you know, I'm not here to debate and argue with you. It's just my opinion. But um, we gone.